We had fun at chapter 2 and 3 talking about our church age. Chapter 4 and 5, we've seen a lot of amazing things about what would be in heaven. Chapter 6 through 22, you're going to be in shock. Now let's start. Unleash the seal. Verse 1, And I saw John sees when the Lamb opened one of the seals. So now he unleashes the first seal. And I heard John hear something, as it were the noise of thunder. So there's a noise coming out out of nowhere. And then notice, the verse keeps reading, one of the four beasts saying, so notice, one of the four cherubims. That's interesting. So one of the four cherubims here, what you're going to find out is this. As you read, some of you know the passage, verses 1 through 8, is talking about the four horsemen, right, of Revelation, or what the secular people know about the four riders of the apocalypse, right? It is based off of Revelation 6, 1 through 8. And on verses 1 through 8, you'll see the four horsemen riding along. As much as I hate to do this, I've got to erase our entire church age here. We're going to be talking about the tribulation now, right? Yeah, the church is not going through the tribulation, so this got to be erased right here, all right? I'm sorry if I made some of you pre-rathers and post-tribbers mad, but I'm sorry. I have to be scriptural here. i got to erase that, okay? Yeah. All right, now notice right here that with these seals... And then all of the hell on earth is unleashed. Let's cover this timeline. The tribulation begins. The first seal. So let's unleash the seals right here. As he unleashes the seals, you'll notice right here. And that's why Revelation chapter 1 through 3 is going to be important as he unleashes that first seal right here because they're going to have to know what they're going to practice as a saint doctrinally when this Antichrist comes. That's the first seal, the Antichrist. Notice verse 1, And I saw when the Lamb opened one of the seals, and as I heard with the, voice, uh, with the noise of thunder, one of the four beasts saying, Come and see. So remember, there are four cherubs up in heaven. And these four cherubs up in heaven, i got to do this fast, okay. So these four cherubs up in heaven... They're going to match, you're going to find out that they're going to match the four horsemen of Revelation. Because look at the second horseman, third horseman, fourth horseman. Each of these beasts introduce these riders. What does that mean? This could mean that as it introduced one of the, uh, uh, these four horsemen, that Satan, he always wants to imitate God. So he has, God has his four riders. Didn't you know these cherubs? The Bible says God rides on the wings of a cherub. Did you read that at the book of Psalms? Yeah, a cherubim. God rides on the wings of a cherub. Don't look at me like a tree full of owls. Look at the scriptures and you don't believe me. Look at your, uh, you all have dinky little iPhones, you know. Search word it right now if you don't believe me, all right? So notice right here that God has his own riders. And Satan wants his own writers of the apocalypse. All right, we're just starting. We're just starting, okay? <laughs> I didn't finish verse 1 yet, okay? <laughs> All right, but when this person comes out, let's look at verse 2, who this being is. And I saw, uh, so the 4B says, come and see, right? So this whoever this first cherub says, says, look at this one coming out. Who's coming out? John sees at verse 2, And I saw, and behold, a white horse. So here comes this white horse. Looks positive. Must be Jesus Christ. And he that sat on him had a bow. See that? Kind of looks like a cross. This must be Jesus Christ. Someone sitting down on this white horse having a bow. And a crown was given unto him. That's got to be Jesus Christ, man. He's got a crown on his head. Here's his majesty, the king. And he went forth conquering and to conquer. So he's conquering all the enemies around the world. This is Jesus Christ. So what does it, ver so verse 1, it says all of a sudden there's a noise. And verse 2, he suddenly shows up. What that could mean then is this, is that this being comes out of nowhere, like a UFO, some bit doo -doo 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 noise, you know, or <coughs> like that. And then all of a sudden out of nowhere, doo -doo 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 -doo, comes this rider. He comes out, 
And then he's obviously dressed in white. And then he's got these two fingers coming out. And then right here, you know, he's got a crown on his head, you know, looks like a fishbowl almost, you know, or like upside down grapefruit, you know, sometimes, you know. But he comes out with this crown, and then he says, uh, I'm going, I'm finally here, the one you've been waiting for. And let, let's take back the kingdom now. You all fought, you know, we've fought it through it together. Now let's conquer these hate groups and these terrorists out there. I'm going to, the troubles you've been having with Russia, China, and other rogue nations, the Muslim nations, I'm going to keep doing this. United Nations, good job, you held through. All the ecumenical World Council of Churches, good job in keeping it together. Now let's do a complete conquest right here. And they say, hallelujah, worthy is the lamb that was slain. This is Jesus Christ. It's got to be Jesus Christ, right? Well, look at Revelation 19. Revelation 19. Let's see Jesus Christ on his horse, if this is it. Revelation chapter 19, verse 11. Now, notice this is way after this first horseman. This rider that comes out. Revelation chapter 19, verse 11. And I saw heaven open. And behold, a white horse, and he that sat upon him was called, look at this, faithful and true. That's Jesus Christ. And in righteousness, he just judge and make war. There's your conquering and to conquer. Look at verse 12. He's not bringing peace. His eyes were as a flame of fire, and on his head were how many crowns? Many, many crowns. Wait a minute. At chapter 6, it's just a crown. That's why there's a hymn that says, crown him with what? Many crowns. And look at verse 12. And he had a name written that no man knew but he himself. Look at that. Notice verse 13. And he was clothed with vesture. Notice what it says. Dipped in blood. Well, that can't be Jesus Christ. This is not. Imagine this being comes out of nowhere. Eyes all red with fire and then a a garment dipped in blood, you know what the world's going to do? That's not Jesus Christ. That's the Antichrist we were warned about right here. This is not the blonde-haired, blue-eyed Jesus that loves me as a homosexual for who I am. This can't be Jesus Christ right here. No, no, this is a crazy hate group. How about that, huh? Look at verse 15. Out of his mouth goeth a sharp sword, that with it he should smite the nations. That can't be Jesus Christ. No, no, no. He's got to come down peaceably like verse 2, where he has a bow right here. This bow, he's got to come down with the bow. Something peace, uh, it's a weapon, but it's going to be done peaceably. Who's the being that comes and conquers the world through peace? Mm. Jesus Christ, what did he say? I came not to bring peace, but a what? How about that? Look at verse 13. His name is called the what? Word of God. Oh, that can't be Jesus Christ. No, that book? No. It, we ban this out of our schools. We ban this out of our government. We want to separate church and state. That's the reason why, you know? So we're going to separate the Ten Commandments right over here. And uh, no, the, there are so many different scriptures, not just one book. What, the King James Bible? Come on, man. What about the Quran? What about the Book of Mormon? What about the writings of Bhagavad Gita and all these other writings? We got to have all these books. What about the ESV, the NIV, the NKJV, you know? And all these other 200 plus versions that we're still working on, but we're getting closer. You know, this can't be Jesus Christ. No, 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 no. This is one of those hate groups, cultists, King James only guys. See that? Am I getting warmer? Am I getting hot? Isn't that, aren't we living at this time? All right, so you can guess then at verse 1 through 2. Let's go back here at chapter 6. That's not Jesus Christ. His hellish majesty. And that is the Pope. That is the Pope right over here, coming down, conquering and to conquer. Now, a lot of people uh, don't think that it's going to be the Pope. The reason why is because the Pope is more of a uh, religious figure. 
rather than a secular, uh, political, powerful figure. But me, what I believe is this, is that I kind of, I believe more what Dr. Upman taught concerning about the Pope as the Antichrist in his Revelation commentaries and uh, in his Apocalypse book. And also all the other Christians, you got to realize this, for, thou for over a thousand years, when they talked about the Antichrist, they were referring to the Pope. The Great Awakening Revival preachers, they called the Pope the Antichrist. But not only that, you got to realize this too, is that um, the Catholic popes, as you look at the beginning early centuries to now, they've always changed. That's why they don't think that today's Pope could be the Antichrist, because why? They're only looking at their today's point of view of the Pope. But if you look at the early centuries, the Pope was not like today's. The early days, the Pope was basically the ruler of the whole world. And then if you study conspiracies as time passes by, this went underground where they received their power. And they're playing a minor role. And then as we hit the tribulation, they change roles again, where he becomes an awesome figure. But even today, you're seeing new things with the Pope today. You got a Jesuit who became a Pope. That's unheard of. And if you uh, study conspiracies, the one who's like the top of the pyramid is pretty much the Jesuit leader or the Jesuit general. He's AKA called the Black Pope. But some people, they don't understand how a Jesuit general can combine with a white pope, they called him. That's interesting, too. They called him the what? White pope. Isn't that interesting? White pope? All you have to do is combine that black pope with the white pope together in the same role. You think that's impossible? The Antichrist can do that. He can combine both roles and take over the whole world. But what's so interesting is, is that if you read the bloody oath of the Jesuits, if you read the Jesuit oath, which was before the oath of the Masons, if you read the oath of the Jesuits, they mention right over here in their bloody oaths that the goal is to make sure the whole world is under the, uh, the conquest and the rulership of the white pope. That's their job, see? That's very interesting right here. So it fits up with the whiteness. Where'd you get the idea of the cross right here? Well, all, if we're going to draw this bow, you'll notice right here that if you want to aim, what do you do when you aim? You pull it back like over here, and then you get a cross shape, just like that. But look at, so when you're pulling it, and you're pulling up that arrow, you get a cross shape right there. Isn't it also interesting that as God mentions about this spiritual uh, creature that comes down like this, if you're going to come down with a bow and you're going to shoot, what happens when you let go of that arrow? Bling! How about that? Peace be unto you. No, that's death. And by the way, what does this mean to the Pope? Peace. But the Bible says the Antichrist comes in and conquers the world, kills the people through what? Peace. 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 Oh, what a wonderful guy. Peace be unto you. Now, if someone does this on you, that's not peace. That's a hex, man. That's a hex, man. Just stay away from that. You know what's very interesting? Winston Churchill, who gave the famous, uh, what? V for victory, right? And what is so disturbing about that, how did he achieve victory, though? An ultimate surrender. Ultimate surrender, and when they fully conquered their enemies. How about that? Look at the UN. If you, did you look at these pictures of these politicians and the people part of the UN? If you dig into conspiracies and you look at that, and not even a conspiracy researcher, just be a history researcher, look at all these photos, these politicians, when they do their signing, their treaties, and their meetings, they go like this. How about that? How about that? Wow. This is wild. Wild right here. Comes down with the bow. Now, some of the people say, how can you, you said that he is a Syrian Jew, which is what I believe. He's going to be a Syrian Jew. But how is, 
how is he going to, how's the Pope going, to, you said he's a Pope, and then you say he's a Syrian, and then you say he's a Jew. How does that work? And how does the white Pope become the black Pope? Look, you got to realize this. This is, how is, he, how is the Antichrist going to control the whole diversity of worlds unless he meets up all the diversity of roles? Isn't Jesus Christ fulfilling diverse roles of prophet, priest, and king? You don't think Satan's going to try to imitate that? He's going to imitate everything right there. So if we're going to talk about a Syrian Jew, this is very interesting. When you talk about the, Ass the Assyrian bow and we talk about Nimrod the hunter. When you read Genesis, the Bible says Nimrod was a mighty what? Hunter before the Lord. How do you hunt? What do hunters do to kill? How about that? Nimrod's coming down. And you look at a Syrian bow right over there. You know what it is? It's like this shape, and then you have to pull it like this. Fingers. You have to do it like that, and then let it go, and then kill the enemy. How about that? You ain't seen nothing yet. Let's look at... No. Okay, so we have to end it here. My favorite was not verse 1 and 2. My favorite was 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and 8. That was my favorite, so especially verse 8, death and hell. We will cover that next week, okay?